Power 105 One is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. We have a special guest with us this morning. One of New York's new faces. Mr. Joey Badass. Absolutely. How you doing, man? What's up, Redren? Man, I'm just chilling, you know, hanging. He's from, f- he's from where I'm from. Brooklyn. Flatbush. From Jersey? Oh, you from Flatbush? Mm-hmm. I thought right. you were from Jersey. No, you're from Jersey now, Envy. No, I'm Actually, I was born in Brooklyn and raised in Flatbush. Oh. Okay. Uh, now, Joey or is a young... You live there? No, I live in Best I live in Best What's the difference between Flatbush and Best Eye anyway? But I might be moving back. This is a difference. It's definitely a difference. Oh, yeah. I might be moving back, though, because I'm looking at a house in that area now. All right. Now, Joy, you're a young guy. How old are you? 18. 18. But your sound is like real vintage, 1990s-style hip-hop New York. Like, how, how did an how did 18-year-old, you know, bypass sounding like he's from the South but still sound like he's from New York? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um... Well, by not listening to the radio much. Hey. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks, bro. Thanks. Thanks. I mean, that's, that's a great. buck, though. That's a buck. I'm that's real. Keep it that was a long time ago you listened to the radio. Now you listen to the radio. You listen no, to the radio. Still like, don't, no, he still don't. He was in there sitting in the lobby. He had his headphones on the whole time. He didn't care what you was playing. <laughs> Damn it, man. Yeah, I mean, he ain't lying. But, um, like, I was born in the 90s, so, uh, like, you know, when I was in my car seat, like, I would just bump into, like, when my parents was bumping, and I was, like, Biggie, Nas, Jay, like, the early them, of course. Wu Tang. Wu Tang, like you know, the golden age of hip hop, and like that's just what I was enthused by when I was younger. So when I got older and I grew up, um, like you know, I went back. Mm-hmm. I just started listening, and like that's just what carried me through. Now I gotta ask you, how did your first video end up on World Star? Was it they just posted it there, or did you send it in for submission? Yo, actually, the story about that is is really funny. Like, um. It was actually just me, like, putting something in the air and, like, just trying to make it happen because, um, like, I just had this vision one night. I was like, yo, I'm just going to make this freestyle video. I'm going to let my homie record it, and I'm going to just send it to Worldstar. So I, I ended up recording this video. I sent it to Worldstar, like, ten times. Like, i never seen it on Worldstar myself, but, um, like, it got on YouTube, and um, my manager right there, Johnny Scheist, he came across it. But when he came across it, he told me he seen it on Worldstar. Scheist? Johnny, Johnny Shites. Shites. Johnny oh, Shites. I'm about to say his name Shites. You got to watch him. <laughs> I better respect that man over there. <laughs> but yeah, he came across it. He said he seen it on Worldstar, but um, I don't know. I've never seen that video on Worldstar. It was just like a myth that like I just told everybody. Did you think people were going to gravitate towards your sound? Like being that it was so traditional New York? I mean, at first they didn't, they didn't do it as quick as I thought. As I thought it would happen, but that didn't bother me at all. I just kept um, making music because I just love to do it. So, what was your process of getting so hot so fast? Because I mean, you've been on my MTV show. You've been pretty much everywhere. And, and the other day, we had a. Uh, he was about the kid that I brought in here. He was like 19, 20 years old. Remember, I brought him over here. I was, brought a kid up here, 19, 20 years old, and I was asking who his favorite artist I was. That was your sober buddy. No, no, no. And he told me that Joey Badass. I was like, well, how did you get listening to Joey Badass? He was like, you know, growing up, he was like. I didn't listen to none of that South stuff. He said, so what I listened to was like Eminem yeah, yeah, and Joey yeah. Badass and the lyricists. So how did you get so hot so fast? Well, um, I actually don't know. I guess I guess it was it was the um like word of mouth. Mm-hmm. Like people just spreading like, yo, lyricism is back, like and NYC is coming back like like how it used to be. I mean, I I, I really don't know. I just been rapping, really. Mm-hmm. And you, like you also had an opportunity to sign with Rock Nation, and you decided to stay independent. I read that somewhere, so I didn't know if that's a myth or true. Um, it's it's, it's true, it's true, but that's what I'm gonna say. Because I would think Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? You're from Brooklyn. A lot of people from Brooklyn would dream of being down with Jay Z, right. and I'm sure that's somebody you grew up looking up to as well. So definitely, definitely, like um, like the number one person like I look up to. Um, but uh, like the whole situation with that was just uh, I. I really don't know. Like, you know, we, we, we had a meeting, and um, I guess he just understood my vision. Mm-hmm. Did you really delete your Twitter account because of Little B's fans? No. <laughs> did you delete no, your Twitter account? Well, what happened yeah, with him and Little B? my Twitter. What happened with him and Little B? Well, Little B put out a diss record against Joey Badass. I don't, I don't know what the reason was for, because I don't <laughs> listen to Little B. No, it, it was something sucks. from a mixtape that, that they had out before. Where... You did a mixtape with Little B? No. Oh. No. <laughs> where they, they kind of went in on Little B. And then Little B was responding. My homie Capital Steez, he had the yeah, line. Capital Steez. Rest in peace. He had the line. He said, uh, tell the bass guy don't quit his day job. Okay. And that was like a year ago. And I tweeted that. And I tweeted that to him. I was like, yo, I don't care. I'm just about to start rap beef because I'm a hothead. And that's what I did. I mean, Little B does <laughs> suck. So, I mean, I, I, I knew Yeah, and I didn't like him. So. I, I, I don't know him personally, but as a per- a music, musically, he's terrible. Well, did y'all know each other personally or you just don't like his music? I don't even think he's a real person. <laughs> you think he's a catfish account? 
That could nah, be. Nah, nah. That could be true. <laughs> that, could, that, that could be true. Little Little B could be a catfish account. I've never even seen he Little B. He does shows before he. Exists. Yes. Yes. Uh, hey, but bad. enough about that. It's a Joey Badass interview. <laughs> Absolutely. But you put out a diss record too, as well, responding back. So. Yeah, I mean that that's just because like I could just do that. Like, is is there's nothing to me to like just just write bars. I'm always just writing. So like that night, I was just hyped up by a couple friends and. Shit. And it was just like, yo, you should just make a diss record back. Like, but only if you could put it out tonight. And I was, it was just like a challenge, really. That's how Charlamagne be gassing people up, too. Get what? you to do something. You gotta do it, but you gotta do it right gotta now. Gotta do it right now. <laughs> Seize the moment. So why did you delete your Twitter up. account? Because, like, I just feel like I give people too much of, like, my thoughts on my Twitter. And, like, I, I just don't like people having insight to, like, my mind and my thoughts and my moves and like that, so. But ain't that's what music? That's what music is, though. You giving them insight to your thoughts. Yeah, but it need to only be the music. I need to like gotcha. hop off that, stop running my mouth. He so won't like, give it away just... for free. He at least got buy his music on the show. <laughs> Where do you get your production from? Because I mean, your production even sounds vintage '90s. Like, who's doing the beat? My homie Chuck Strangers, uh, my homie Lee Bannon, my homie Kirk Knight. Um, these are all people in my camp. And now, like even recently, I've been working with um some Premier, some right? legends. Yeah, DJ Premier, Pete Rock. Um, I got the chance to get in the stool with Q-Tip the other day. Mm. So, like, I'm just uh, extremely ecstatic about all this. I so, saw you um, say Premier was a mentor of yours on the Weekend Jam. It's, I'm, I'm sure he gravitated towards you because of your traditional sound in New York style. Definitely, definitely. Um, when I first met Premier, it was just, like, um, like meeting the hip-hop OG and, then, like, he's riding with you, so, like, he's trying to make sure that, like, you know, you're doing the right things, too. Gotcha. So, like, that's what it was. So what is the plan for you, being that you decided that you want to stay independent for now? Is that how you want to put out your first album? I know your first mixtape just came out um, last year. So what's right. next? I mean, right now there's a lot of offers on the table. And um, I pretty much wrapped up my, I guess, album, mm -hmm. you could say, like, recently. So um, we're just going we're just going to, like, you know, roll out, see, see who's the highest bidder. If not, then um, I don't know. I just might keep it independent. I don't. I don't. I don't really know. I know you're, you're cool with Mac Miller, right? Because he had reached out to you guys. Mac. Work together. You've done shows together. Maybe that's a formula that you're trying to do, where he he put his first album out independently, sold a lot of units, made a lot of money off of that, did a lot of touring. Obviously, is that something that you're considering? I mean, yeah, definitely something I'm considering. Like, uh, like you know, just uh, branching myself out on the independent tip, seeing like you know how well I could do on my own. Mm -hmm. Definitely something um, I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So do you like any South music at all, or was it just all New York stuff coming up? I mean, yeah, I, I, I like some South music. Uh, like what? What do you it? listen to now besides yourself? Uh, I don't I don't. You got really Big Crit on the record, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, Big Crit. That's actually the homie. He's actually a label mate. Johnny, yeah, that's manager. Johnny Shapes artist. Oh, as well. okay. Yeah, so that's synchro right there. I'm about to say, I thought you said label made Def Jam. I'm like, well, you don't no, need no, to no, be no. over there with Crit on Def Jam because they don't know how to work Crit on that at all. <laughs> Not even a little bit. <laughs> they don't. Look at that man's face, he's telling you. He knows. So, what's that real hip hop pussy like, man? Like, the group is. Stop like, it, he has a girlfriend. He has a girlfriend. Like, real? Like, you know, <laughs> do you believe in that? Like, real hip hop? Are you, would you consider yourself real a real hip hop? Hip -hop? Real now, everybody hip -hop says, I, I, everybody's like, oh, that's real hip hop. That's not real hip hop. Yeah, I consider myself real hip hop. Do you 100%. consider the other stuff not real hip hop? Like somebody like Flocka or Future or something like that? I mean, I, I just feel like, you know, over the years, hip hop has branched out. Like, you know, it's like sub genres of hip hop now. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, it's all types of shit. Like, they should just call it like Southern rap or some shit. So, in 2013, are there real hip hop head groupies? Are there girls who get wet over lyricists? Hell yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness! He's been He's getting it in. So you're saying your album is done? It's rap, and you're ready to turn it in. Whatever For the most happens. part, um, I'm just trying to get up with Primo once more, mm -hmm. and um. You know, about to clear some samples and shit like that. But yeah, for the most part, it's wrapped up. You should do something with like RZA or something too. I that should, would be dope. Right? That would be dope. Definitely should. That mm -hmm. just might happen. And I think you should stay indie too, man. I, I don't think majors know how to work somebody like you in 2013. I mean, definitely got to show him how. Definitely you can't show if you know how. what you're doing yourself. Yeah, it's a good thing, because as long as he continues to do what he does and they'll put him on a bigger platform, I think it'll be a good look for him. Yeah. And Johnny over there knows what he's doing. He did, he no, did it a couple Johnny, of times. Uh, Johnny let Chris sign the Def Jam, so I don't know. Let's <laughs> up. But Chris oh, doing good, though. <laughs> Chris producing, Chris making money. Chris doing good out there. They also have Sean Kingston. Sean Kingston's doing amazing. Oh, okay, okay. That's what it is. All right, well, it's the Breakfast Club on Power 105.1. Joey Badass.